Welcome to Explorers on the Seashore. Today we're going to be looking at seashells and their friends. Did you know that seashells and your teeth have something in common? Calcium. The enamel that's in your teeth is made up of a mineral called calcium phosphate in a crystalline structure. But the calcium that's in seashells is called calcium carbonate. Wow, so teeth and seashells are more complex than I would have thought. Shall we head to the beach? But where should we go? Well, we're actually in the intertidal zone at the moment. That zone is actually divided into three smaller sections. There's the upper shore, the middle shore, and the lower shore. Noreen, why don't you take the upper shore? Myself and Anna will head towards the rock pools in the middle and lower shore. What you will need to have handy while watching is a pen or pencil and your workbook. Don't forget to check out the Explorer's safety and conservation code. These will help you stay safe on the seashore. See you guys! Hi, I'm here on the upper shore where you can find lots of cool stuff. Do you want to go exploring? Let's go! One of the things I want to show you today are seashells, which we can find lots of here on the upper shore. Now, seashells are part of a family called mollusks. Mollusks are animals that have a hard shell on the outside of their body and their soft, gooey, fleshy parts are inside and all their organs. They're just like a snail you'd find in your garden. Now, we have really, I suppose we have loads of different types, but there's two main groups. Some of them have just one part to their shell. These ones are called gastropods, where the other types have two parts to their shells. We call those bivalves. This is one of my favorite ones and it's really distinctive. You can tell it apart from nearly all the others really easily. This is a razor clam. It's got a really nice Irish name too, Skianwara sea knife. Now, the thing about bivalves is they have two parts to their shell and they have to be kind of hinged together in the middle. So they have to have a way of opening and closing their shells. Um, when the tide is out and they need to be protected, their shell is closed tight and they keep all their soft, vulnerable bits inside. But when the tide is in and they're feeding, some of them just stick out like one uh, foot, which is like a straw that they suck in water and they use for feeding, and their other foot then they push out and they use it to pull themselves along for movement in the sand. And this razor clam is no different. It would have one siphon that comes out from the top for feeding and one foot that will come down from the bottom for movement. Now, another type of bivalve, which is a little bit different, is our very common mussel or doulachine in Irish. This guy doesn't move around as much as the razor clam. He likes to stick onto the rocks using uh, bissel threads. They're like little beards. Uh, sticks onto the rock and this attaches him on for his life so he's held on tight. When the tide comes in then he opens the two parts of his shell up again and sticks out his little feet to feed. Now, the other type of shell that we mentioned earlier, those gastropods, those ones with just one single shell. This guy here is a wonder. He's a limpet. Looks a little bit like a volcano, I kind of think, or a pointy mountain. This limpet just has one shell, one part to its body, or its hard parts. He lives stuck on tight onto our rock. And when the tide comes in, he moves across the rock to feed and leaves a kind of trail of slime behind him that he can follow back then to what's called his home scar, which is where he settles every time when the tide is out and he needs to protect himself from predators. One of the things about visiting the shore is you never know what you might find, particularly after a storm or windy weather. This morning, we have discovered some incredible goose barnacles known in Irish as Gjorn. Now, 
these animals are generally found way out there, out at sea. They live attached onto pieces of floatsome and jetsome, things that are just floating in the water. These guys were living on a piece of wood and they've been carried in by the tide now. And you can see them here washed up on the shore. We are here now on the middle shore. This is a really exciting place to be. At first glance, there's not very much to see, but you need to stop and look. So some of the animals will be living under the seaweeds and the rocks, but other animals will find these lovely rock pools to live in. Now, it might look very big for us, but there are hundreds of little animals in here competing for space and there are lots of hungry bellies so the smaller little animals like the prawns and the crabs will have to find small little hiding places so they don't become prey. Their habitat is one of the harshest environments in the planet. Animals that live in this harsh rocky seashore environment have many adaptations so they can survive the many challenges. They have to survive changing tides and crashing waves the weather where they get wet, then dry, then wet again. They also have to hide from predators inside in the rock pools, such as crabs, and outside such as hungry birds. Depending on the weather, the seashore animals also have to survive rain, storms, and exposure to the sun where they might dry out. Or in their rock pools, they may get very warm and water levels might get very low. The salinity in the rock pools can also get too salty when the rock pools dry out or diluted with rainwater when it rains. This struggle happens every day. So one of my favorite seashells you can find at the beach is the periwinkle shell. There's lots of different species of periwinkle and they come in all different shapes and sizes. So here we have two different species of periwinkle. We have our flat periwinkles here and our rough periwinkles. The Irish name for our flat periwinkle here is Foeche Lahan and the name for our rough periwinkle is Foeche Garov. The flat periwinkle come in this lovely yellow colour, which is a really unusual colour for the seashore. You'd think um, animals would find them really easily, but they camouflage really well on this seaweed here, which is what they eat. Here I have two species of periwinkle. We have our flat periwinkle here. It will grow to about one centimetre and it um, doesn't have a real spiral shape here. It's very flat. We have our rough periwinkle, which grows to two centimetres and you can clearly see its lovely spiral shape here. The rough periwinkle colour can vary from oranges, reds, browns to blacks. It is more likely to be found on rocks and in crevices. And last but not least, we have the edible periwinkle, which is also known in Irish as Giridon. The edible periwinkle is the largest and can grow up to three centimetres. The edible periwinkle is dark grey, olive and brown in colour and often has lighter coloured lines around its spirals. Its shell is spiral, cone-shaped shell with a flatter body than the flat and rough periwinkle, which means it's more fleshy. Both humans and crabs love to eat periwinkles. Here we have another type of sea snail called the top shell. It got its name from an old fashioned children's toy called the spinning top. The thick or toothed top shell in Irish is Fuechan Wera Chov. It is gray olive green with dark small purple or maroon colored zigzags around its spiral. The thick top shell is more like a cone and has a more pointy top and its spiral shell is wider or thicker at the bottom than the flat top shell. Its opening also has a little bump on it that looks like a small tooth. The flat or purple top shell, which is Fuechan Wera Corcra in Irish, is smaller, growing up to two centimeters. It has a flatter top, which is silvery and gray and has stronger markings, which look like purple bands. Top shells are also herbivores and can be found under rocks grazing on seaweeds. So when we take a closer look at our uh, periwinkle and our top shell, we can see the differences between them. We can see our upper killums 
um, which is like a trap door into the entrance of the seashell. So this little trap door helps them retain the moisture inside in their shells so they don't dry out. You can also see a difference between the top shell and the periwinkle as the top shell has this lovely mother of pearl effect on the inside of the shell and the periwinkle has a much darker inside. The gastropod seashells, including the sea snails, also have a siphon for breathing, tentacles and a head with a feeding tongue. The seashells that we've seen today are all herbivores. Our flat periwinkle um, eats our seaweed and our rough periwinkle grazes the algae off the rocks. I'm here in the lower part of the intertidal zone. This is actually about as far out as the tide will get. Once the tide comes in, it'll cover this entire area of water. Sometimes that amount of water could actually get taller than I am here. Now, this area is teeming with life, and all we have to do is go looking under some rocks and seaweed in order to find it. found one of my favorite types of shellfish just under this rock here. Now, under rocks is probably the best place to look for them. They need somewhere where they can keep a bit of moisture, where they don't dry out in the air or the sun. So if you're looking for shellfish, have a look under some rocks and stones. But the one I'm looking for is this one just here, and that is the dog whelk. Now, the dog whelk, you can see her surrounded by her eggs, these little almost kind of yellowish grains of rice surrounding her. Uh, they're also pretty common around where you'll find dog whelks at this time of year as well. Now you can spot some limpets just surrounding her there as well. Now she looks fairly harmless and she would be to us, but dog whelks are actually quite vicious predators in our seashore. And what they'll do is they'll find other shellfish and they will bore a hole through the shell into the animal and then drink them up. So now we're going to look back on what we learned. So today's activity could be drawing your seashells. If you're on the shore, you can make a picture with your shells, or if you're back in the classroom or at home, why not make a lovely collage to remember your visit to the shore? We've had a great time on the seashore today. From all of us on the shoreline, remember, keep exploring! exploring. Thank you.